Hi, thanks for coming and staying. Does everyone in this room know about Genome? So, for those, for the ones who doesn't know, Genome is a free desktop, free Linux desktop, and Genome is all about the community. We have people all around the world, and we are building applications together. And I wanted to give a talk about one of the applications we are working on. First thing I'm going to be talking about where did the idea come from for the recipe app. Second thing I'm going to be talking about the design process. And then Matthias is here and he's one of the main developers of the application and he will give a live demo of the application to you. Actually this is not a new idea. People in the genome has always been interested in the in cooking and we have a wiki page for the genome cookbook that dates back to 2007 and people even contributed recipes there but for one reason or another we just couldn't make that thing happen and this year is quite important for genome because we will be celebrating our 20th year and we just wanted to make this application happen so we can give it to genome as a, as a birthday present. Um, when you do the design work, it's quite important. You should be following some kind of structured design process. And for us, the most important thing is to define your goals. Defining your goals is quite important because you don't. You just it enables you to focus on your design. And for the recipe app, those goals were finding recipes all over the world. And Genome is a big community, and there might be some people that has food allergies or and we want to support th those people by allowing them describing the food food restrictions and we just wanted to share the we just wanted to share the recipes sharing recipes and find and printing recipes so you can put them on your fridge and thinking about your goals help you defining your focus and that mostly involves what you are not going to build as much as what you are going to build. So it's very useful to have the non-goals while you are focusing, focusing on your design. And constraints are also important. It is like the technology you are using or the resources you have because based on your resources you want to drop some of the features you are planning, planning to develop. And the second stage in the design process is exploration. It is a research-based thing. And this involves user research and looking at the relevant art. And for the Genome Recipe app, we look for the Gourmet application. It's a Genome 2 application, Antlis cooking application, K recipes, and BBC food website. And while you are looking at, at the existing applications, you should be evaluating them, like what you like about them and what you don't like about them. And we edit this. And the third thing is, in the design process, is to develop your design. And here you can use your notebook, pen, and ruler, and or you might use Inkscape or Sketch tools like that. And here. You just have like lots of things in your hand, lots of design ideas, concept ideas, and by th going through the process, you just narrow them down. And and at this stage, you can start to do your mockups. And but the thing you should be careful that you shouldn't be like detailing everything, every little thing you have. You don't want to detail every little thing your app is gonna do. It should be a high level thing. It is just a three-step process definition. You just you are just going you are just defining what you are going to build. Exploration you just explore your pro problem space, and in the in the development stage you just design something. But this is not a linear process. You are just going through back and forward in this process, and while you are doing this, you just rerun your goals here. And once you want to design an application for a platform, you need a design language for that. 
and for GNOME it's thick. This is our replication icon and our visual designer Jakub wanted to do this for us and those are the first sketches he has done in the beginning but at the end we have this logo and we have the stickers here you might want to get them at the end of the presentation and I will just walk you through the screens we have I just wanted to put my mockups and the actual design we have right now so you can see that how this evolved by time and this thing is quite similar to the what we have for the genome software application you we just want to keep the things similar in the as in the genome and this is for the cook it later feature you just went on the recipe detail page once you press the button for the cook it later you just you the ingredients on the recipes are added to your shopping list and you may print them and you may go with them to the market and cuisine page it was one of the goals while we are working on it because genome is a com community thing and we have people all, all around the world and we want to categorize those countries based countries we just want to categorize those things and for the chefs page so people can explain them here can, can explain themselves here this is just for adding a new recipe page and we have the restrictions food restrictions data restrictions and the spiciness level as well and on the recipe detail page we have start cooking button once you start the cook start cooking button a full view appears on your screen and by the by the full view you can just follow your process step by step because you might have like messy hands and you might you can just your one hand like going through the screens here and this is the UI review that is done in Bruno last week with Matthias Thomas and Jakub and they came the idea that it is quite difficult to add a new recipe on our screen and editing as well so we are planning to simplify this process and it will be done by time so if you want to see the details for the recipe app you can go for the project page and those are the people that contributed to the recipe app and I want to thank them all <laughs> so I'll slide them all Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, now let's see. You can also see something. Uh, it might work. So this is a live demo. That's always the fun part, and something will fail. Uh, but I hope you all enjoy that. I always enjoy it. Um, so let's see if I can switch this to mirroring. Well, it might still work. Well <laughs> <laughs> That's the hard part, right? <laughs> After that, it gets easier. So um, I'm Matthias. Hi, everybody. I, I've done most of the coding on this application. And I uh, was going to do a bit of a live demo here. Let's see if this actually works, if I can find my application. Um, so um, as I have been said, she showed the paper mockups that um, I started working from initially. And um, that was back in October. And I, it was the first step. I tried to implement just what was in those mockups, pretty much uh, as accurately as I could. And this is how the application looked, uh, I guess, mid-November, so after like three or four weeks of working on it. And I just like clicked through a few things here to, to show some things. Um, there's quite a lot of functionality there already, like we have this um, uh, recipes landing page in place. We have the cuisines page. We actually even have an ingredients page that is no longer there. I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But well, first, I can dive into this here. This is the original details details page for an individual recipe. And um, 
you just arrange things on the screen somehow here. And um, functionality is actually in place here quite a bit. There's like an image switcher here, so you can have multiple images for each recipe. And you can, this is actually something I'm a little proud of, you can uh, say I want to serve six people instead of four, and then the ingredients list actually gets scaled up, so that's neat. Um, and then there's this start cooking button that Elvin talked about. But um, this was the initial idea, just a quick quick sketch for what we could do for supporting people when they actually want to cook this recipe. So we came up with this idea of having a checklist where you can say, okay, I've gathered my ingredients, now I've preheated the oven, and I've followed all the instructions, and now I can set a timer, and um, then I'll be done. So that was like a very quick um, idea for supporting cooking. And um, yeah, I mean, I got that implemented relatively quickly. Oh, <laughs> time is up, okay. Um, Let's see what else. And um, yeah, now I'll switch to uh, the application as it looks today. And I'll actually go to the landing page again. And uh, I, I think it looks clearly more, more refined. So uh, after implementing the original mockups, uh, we went over basically every part of the application with Jacob and Elvin and, and revisited the initial design and came up with some uh, nicer visuals for the tiles and uh, arranged everything neatly in three columns and all these <coughs> things that make it look good. And um, you can, as Evan said, this is, um, the landing page looks kind of similar, it looks and feels similar to the landing page of other GNOME applications, like this is the GNOME 3 application style, I would say. You can just start to type and search will happen like this. So this is the search results. And I wanted to find this recipe because this is one I can actually play around a li little bit with. So this is again the uh, recipe detail view, but you can see it looks clearly more organized now than it was back then. Um, and the neat scaling feature is still there, so if I do that, it works again, <laughs> awesome. And um, we have this, um, the images here. We actually have like a full screen light box for the images now, so you can actually see in detail and you can go through them. Kind of expect the functionality, I guess. Um, what else, yeah. There's the ingredients list. You can see that you can actually split the ingredients list in separate uh, sections, like there's a segment for the dough, and then you can have a different ingredients list for the toppings. And uh, the shopping list feature, a cook later feature that Elvin mentioned is now called buy ingredients, just because it's more obvious that that's what it does. But uh, I'm not gonna click that now, I'm gonna click on edit. So this is the, the edit view for this recipe now. And I just wanted to very quickly show that I can actually change this here. Maybe I want to say, oops, is this scroll off screen? Yeah, this scroll off screen, that's kind of bad. Let me see if I can bring this down. Actually, maybe call this pitted. And then, so that works, editing works. And if I scroll down here, this big text field at the bottom here is where you enter like the main part of the recipe, the instructions for what you're actually gonna do. And originally, uh, we just had a plain text field for that and people were writing their text there. And everybody's kind of itching to like do some formatting there, so you want to make it a sequence of steps. And maybe actually put some images there and, and help the user that way. And we try to support this now a little bit by um, actually defining a kind of wiki-like mini syntax here. And that's explained here. And we decided to not hide this from the user, but actually just put it in the text here so you can actually see the markup so people can learn how to enter that manually if they want. But we do have buttons to support that. And it's a little bit um, maybe an inspiration from GitHub. You have this edit view here, but you can also switch to preview. And then you see how it's gonna look in the actual cooking mode. And you can step through this here. So there's the sequence of steps that we entered. And there's a timer here, so you can actually add timers to this. And if I click the start button, it'll actually start ticking down slowly. So that's all functional. And oops, now I forgot a picture here in this, in this step. So I can go back to the edit view and actually add that picture. So we add this one. And if I now go back to, to the preview, it should be there hopefully. Yes, so that works too. And I think that is uh, almost all I wanted to demo here. Um, just one more thing, I'll go back to the, to the old view, the old application from back in November. And what I mentioned is that um, we have up here, we had this ingredients view, which was in the original paper mockups that I received. So I 
had quite a bit of fun actually implementing this. There's like this little alphabetical sidebar here that you can click and it'll like nicely animate and things like that. So I spent like a weekend on, on that. But <laughs> we couldn't really figure out how to make this useful for the overall goal of the application. So we also are operating on the deadlines here because we want to like have this basically ready for GNOME's 20th birthday. So it needs to be in GNOME 324, which is going to be released in mid-March, only a few weeks left. So we decided to cut this from the application. It's no longer in the, it's no longer in the, I can, can see it here. I need to go back to the menu. So no longer there. Sometimes you have to cut a feature to like make the deadline, right? And uh, again, that's basically what I wanted to show here. So hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I guess then uh, we can ask for questions. If you want to, uh, we have to pass this back and forth, I guess. So, any questions? Yes. What did you use to develop uh, or design that, like, uh, yeah, files, like no builder or something? Right. So, um, yes, um, I'm I'm one of the main GTK maintainers. So, obviously, I'm using GTK and I'm very familiar with it. Yeah. So, I don't necessarily need an IDE to like get something like this put together. Yeah. But part of my motivation for working on this was to, sorry, I'll repeat the question. I forgot <laughs> this. Oh, I'll go back. I'll start over. So the question was, what, what tools did I use to develop yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Did I use an IDE for this, or did I just like use VI? To be honest, most of the time I just use VI because that's um, what I've grown up with and um, what I'm familiar with. But um, part of my motivation for working on this was testing a lot of new things that we develop in GNOME, like sandboxing with Flatpak and um, GNOME Builder and, and GTK3. Uh, new widgetry and things like that. So I did actually make a conscious effort to try and use uh, GNOME Builder for doing some of these things. But it's really hard to teach an old horse new tricks, and I very often just fall back to use VI in the terminal. Yeah. Um, just, I can't help myself. And do you use JavaScript? JavaScript or which language? No, this is written in, in C, and I mean, it's using a lot of like UI files, like XML templates. Ah, okay. So the UI is not neatly separated from the functionality, but it's, it's written in C because I'm an old horse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, in the back. Um, if you're going to have a markup set up, why did you choose not to just implement markdown? Um, we wanted to keep it kind of minimal. You mean you're talking about the like the uh, image and timer thing that I showed there? Yeah, uh, we didn't really discuss that much. Um, we could probably, at some point, we probably want things like headlines, headings, and, and more markup for sections. Yeah, yeah I, I, know, I see where you're coming from, and we will consider that. I live in Istanbul. I live in Istanbul, and he lives in Boston. So we are just communicating online for this project. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And daily, every couple of days, big long emails. How do you? I think it's like every few days. Every few days, we just talk online. Yeah. Okay. Or Telegram, we are using. Yeah. Okay. What I did do at some points was like uh, create yeah. screencasts, just to show like functionality as it develops because I'm developing this on Linux and, and I have Mac. There's a Mac here and I did actually make it build and work on, on OS X <laughs> over Christmas, but initially that was not the case, so yeah. So there's lots of um, communicating about design and building and yes. yeah. things for all the Mac. Yeah, lots of screenshots that get shared and yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any more questions, comments, feedback? Yes. Can we expect an enforcer from other uh, recipe formats at some point? Okay, so I uh, repeat the question. I remember that this time. Uh, will there be an import from other recipe formats? There could certainly be. I mean, I've been working on this as a weekend side project, so I don't necessarily have infinite resources to, to sink into this. But if somebody were to give me a patch for that, I would be really happy. <laughs> Currently, we're just importing and exporting a very stupid homegrown format just because I needed to have import functionality early on because we, we are asking the community to contribute their recipes, so we kind of need to have a way for them to like get them to us. So they need to put them in the application, and they export them, and they send them whichever way to us. So that was an early priority to have that in place. But uh, having an importer for like more established recipe formats would be awesome if somebody wrote it. Yes. No, they are, they are stored locally. Like they, I have some kind of stupid key file format. Okay. Yeah.
Yes. What happens then to the recipes when you update the application? I will, I will I make sure that the application will be able to load <laughs> the old recipes, <laughs> I think. <laughs> and if not, you can blame me for that. Yes. <laughs> we have a kind of this idea in the, at Genome as a Genome cookbook, and it dates back to 2007. And we have a we have an upcoming birthday for the Genome, and we want to, to Genome this as a birthday present. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah it's a really long, long standing yeah. idea to, to have this kind of application in Genome, and it just never happened. And mm -hmm. we're trying to make it happen now. How was how was working between um, a developer and a designer not in the same city and having sort of too much communication? How how was that? Was it easy? Was it difficult? Um. We also have one designer in Czech Republic, and it was like, for example, three of us were not available at the same time. So sometimes Matthias was talking to me. I was talking to him and then he was talking to Jakub and it was like kind of a difficult communication but we just made it happen at the end, yeah. Because I really have like working like crazy so <laughs> I just couldn't have that much time to have it to set up a call at the same time but it happened at the end, yeah. Yeah, I mean I think we had like one or two hangouts all yeah. three together to just sync up and see where things stand. And the, the starting point for this application was actually at Guadag, I believe. Uh, yeah. You sat down with Jacob mm -hmm. to like talk through uh, your mockups. Mm -hmm. So there was some initial face-to-face -face meeting at least, yeah. and some synced up at various points via Hangout. Yeah. Okay. All right. No further questions, I guess. Then everybody's welcome to come up here and like grab a sticker as long as they last. <laughs> I would ask everybody who takes a sticker to maybe try the application and. If you submit a recipe, that would be really awesome. <laughs> <laughs>